Now I'm going to tell you about the conservation of momentum. Oh. Okay, getting too old for this. Let's see. So to understand conservation, we need to tie momentum to Newton's third law. But what we got to do is kind of like energy, we got to think about an isolated system. Okay, so for now, let's have our isolated system just be three masses. Mass one, mass two, mass three. They don't have to be the same mass. And they are the system. And we know that physics is the study of the interactions between objects, either as forces or exchanging energy. So we just got to think about the forces between these objects. We don't even care what they are. Maybe it's gravity, maybe it's electric forces, maybe there's a spring connecting them. Doesn't matter. Let's just draw some forces. M1 and M3 interact, and due to Newton's third law, um, F, if we call this F31, that means the force of three acting on one has to be equal to F13. Right? That's what Newton's third law says, is that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, let's see, M1 and M2 might be repelling each other. This might be the force 2, 1. Therefore, this would have to be the force 1, 2. And then, let's see, 3 and 2, I don't know, maybe they're attractive. F2, 3 would be here, and F3, 2 would be there. So if we draw all these forces, they actually would all cancel, right? So F2, 1 plus F1, 2, if we wrote them as vectors, would be equal to zero. Um, F31 plus F13 would be equal to zero. And then what's left? Three, one, two, three. F23 plus F32 would be equal to zero. So what this means is um, for an isolated system, isolated system the forces sum to zero. All right? So let's write that uh, mathematically. So now I'm going to sum those forces. The sum of the forces, now you're used to that meaning on a single object, Newton's second law. This is not Newton's second law. This is Newton's third law. So let's say the sum over an entire system. So not really on a single object, but on all the objects in the system. Let's add up all those forces. That would equal zero. Okay. That's what it's saying. But then we could also say, um, according to Newton's second law, that all these things together have some momentum. You know, the, as long as we consider the momentum of everything in the system, that that has to be equal to delta P over delta T. Okay. So this equality here is the third law, right? Sum of all the forces in the system are zero. This equality here is the second law. If we're applying it to the system, the total momentum of the system, everything in the system, added up. Okay? So if you accept that, then you say, well, that must mean that in an isolated system, the change of momentum has to be zero. Right? Any times you check, any initial time and final time, time final minus time initial, any range you look at, delta P has to be zero. <coughs> So that means delta P is always zero. So that's what we're saying then, is the change in momentum of a system for all times through any process is zero. And this is the law of conservation of momentum. Just like we had conservation of energy, but this has extra physical insight in it. We'll be comparing the two more later, but momentum is a vector, energy is a scalar. And that brings new ideas into the, momentum, the conservation laws and new ways to use them. So of course what this means is if the change in momentum is equal to zero, it means that in any case, the initial momentum has to equal the final momentum when you go through some change, when you go through some state. So this is the equation we're going to be using quite a bit to work on problems.